So this is a treat for me. Thanks for having me in your home today. Oh, you're today. welcome. I'm excited. Me too. I'm, I'm never on this side of the camera when it comes know. to cooking. I know. How does it feel? <laughs> I'm nervous. I am nervous. I'm sure you'll do great. I have complete faith in you. So what are we making today, Joel? Um, I hope you guys like carbs because I am making stuffing and I am making mashed potatoes, which I know does not sound too exciting, but I like to really pump them up. So these are our holiday dishes that are not about um, watching your waistline. And a staple in a British Christmas dinner. Indeed. All right, what do we have to do to get started for the stuffing? Okay, so we're gonna do a quick uh, saute on some of the vegetables. Joel, I'm gonna get you to help me, okay? Sure. So you're gonna oh, you did the hard work already. Okay. Yeah, we, nobody wants to be crying on camera. <laughs> so I'm gonna put those onions in the pan and there's okay. a spoon there for you. And then I am going to, while you're doing that, I'm gonna chop up some celery stock and we're gonna add that to the pan. So it's gonna slice the celery right down the middle. And so is this a vegetarian stuffing? Because you're yes. a vegetarian. Yeah, yeah. So the stock that we use is a vegetable stock. And my husband is a meat eater, and this stuffing, we usually, he sometimes puts it in the bird, but I usually just cook it in a pan. Right. Okay, so that's our celery. I'm gonna add this to the pan. So we don't wanna cook, overcook the onions or anything. It's really just to kind of sweat them out and get a little bit of flavor in there. So I'm gonna cook, uh, chop these mushrooms. What kind of mushrooms are you using These here? are cremini mushrooms. Ooh. Cremini. Cremini. And we're gonna add a little bit of butter to that pan too because what is cooking tasty, delicious holiday food with dollops and dollops of butter? And I'm gonna throw in some butter on top of that just to get those going. Don't be shy with the butter. And Joel, can you do me a favor? Sure. Can you grab me, snip off some rosemary for me? We don't need a lot. Okay. And then we're gonna chop up some herbs. Okay, so what I have here, you guys, is thyme, sage, and I have parsley, and I have rosemary. Actually, good? we can have a little bit more. A little bit more? Oh. Yeah. So you want to take uh, the rosemary off the stock, because that stuff, even when you fry it, it doesn't really cook down too well. And the same with the thyme. I love the smell of thyme. This really, to me, reminds me of Christmas. You know, the smell of these fresh herbs. I know some of these times these recipes call for dried, but why use dried when you can use fresh? Okay, so we're gonna, just going to give those a rough chop and then we're going to throw them in the pan. Okay, we'll put that into the pan and I think you need to keep tending to that for me. Mm -hmm. There we go. Okay, so we've got our herbs, we've got our onion, mushroom, celery, and now we're going to have, here's our bread because how can you have stuffing without bread? Did you do something special to that bread already? You know what, I just, I just cut it up. I just cut it up and tried to make the you pieces. Just cut it up. <laughs> yeah, I didn't put any seasoning or anything in because right. all the flavor is going to come from Perfect. there. And um, I try to make the bread pieces as even as possible, just for when you're cooking it, you don't get like a dry piece, right. a wet piece. You never know what's going to happen. Okay, so this I kind of just do by eye. I've got um, about two cups of broth here. We're not going to use it all. We want to not oversaturate it. So add a little bit. Yeah. Check it. Add a little bit more. How are the, how's that I think, stuff looking? I think this is looking pretty good. Okay, if you want to come and dump that in here, and then I can add, uh, I'll add more broth on it. See, this is the best part of cooking for me. I like cooking, but I need company, <laughs> right? For sure. Oh, nothing. I would love a sous chef with me all the time in the kitchen. I know, and even if you're not helping, I think even just somebody's hanging out with you, you know, you have a glass of wine, you're, you're talking. That's what makes... we're missing. <laughs> you can open a bottle if you like. <laughs> Then it's Christmas. Mm, does that smell good it or what? It does smell good. You can smell all the thyme and the rosemary. Mm -hmm. And it's the sage, you brow. can actually smell everything in there. Okay. I think that's good. looking pretty good. Okay. So I'm going to transfer this into a pan that I actually oiled with a little bit of olive oil. Okay. And then we're going to pop it in the oven for at 350 degrees, and we're going to cook it till for about 40 minutes. But you want to keep your eye on it because um, all the your everybody's ovens are slightly different, so you don't want to overcook it. And are you looking for like a brown? Yeah, like and then you crust? want to check it to make sure that um, it feels the consistency is not too moist, but not too dry. Right. It's it's tricky. Yeah. So I got an egg, and that's going to help with the moistness mm -hmm. as well, right? Yeah. Gonna pour it over top, and then we'll just sort of give it a light mix through. You don't want to over mix it because you want to keep the bread as fluffy as possible. All right, 
It's good to go in the oven. It's ready. Okay, so our other dish is mashed potatoes. And how exciting are mashed potatoes? So my mother's Irish, and so I have been raised on the potato. <laughs> it is the truth. Okay, so I have already boiled these potatoes. I'm just gonna drain the water out of them. Uh, so what kind of potatoes do you use when you're doing mashed potatoes? Uh, you know what, uh, the yellow, the big yellow ones, I think their russets are really good. Okay. These ones are red skin potatoes. They just looked really nice at the store. And I only, I sort of half peeled them because I only um, I wanted to keep the skin. I just peeled anywhere that looked like it had a little blemish. So that handle's a little hot. Yay! Okay. Okay, so what I like to do is while the pot is still a little bit hot, we're gonna add our milk. And I'm only just gonna add a little bit because I'm not sure, I don't wanna over make them too runny. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of milk. And of course, butter. butter. Milk and butter. Yep. Okay, so now we're gonna add our potatoes. You're gonna throw them right back into the pot? Yeah. Ah, splash on. Stand back, everyone. This is why I wear an apron. <laughs> Okay, so we've got so far milk, potatoes, butter. Butter. All right, Joel, I'm gonna get you to, to mine the potatoes for sure. me. Sure. Okay, so now what we're gonna do to give it that little extra boost, we've got roasted garlic and roasted jalapeno. Okay, so like oven roasted garlic. So what I did is I took the garlic bulb and I cut the top off. And what I'm gonna do, this is still a little bit warm, but I'm gonna squeeze out all the garlic and the two peppers, I roasted them all at the same time. I just threw a little bit of oil, olive oil on them just so they uh, wouldn't get too crispy. So I wanna take out the seeds because that's the part that's extremely hot in a jalapeno. And if you don't want your potatoes to be on fire, you might just have a little bit of a mm -hmm. kick, take the seeds out. And you're gonna get that nice smoky flavor because they're roasted. Mm-hmm. So let's chop those up nicely. Use this stuff. And we're going to squeeze out Magic. hot, hot garlic. Ooh, that smells so good. Roast garlic. Mm-hmm. So obviously we don't need to we don't need to chop it up too much because it's pretty mushy. And once you get in there with a the masher, and we're gonna at the end when everything's all mashed up, we're gonna get a fork and we're gonna fluff it all up. So I'm gonna add the garlic and the jalapeno or jalapeno. And then you tell me if you feel like, does it need any more milk in there? And we'll add uh, some milk. Pretty creamy right now. Okay. Maybe later, but. Okay, I like to add a little bit of pepper, but not too much. And I like pepper finely ground. That's just a preference, personal. I'm just gonna add a smidge of salt because we're also gonna add cheddar and feta cheese. Mm. And as you know, feta is quite salty, so we don't wanna add too much salt. Just a smidge. You ready for the cheese? I'm ready. So is this kind of a twist on your mom's mashed potatoes? Oh, indeed. So my mom's, <laughs> as I say, my mom's Irish. And growing up, it was all about the simple staple foods. The, staple and the mashed foods. potatoes were one of them. And I love, I love a good mashed potato. All right, make a complete mess of the kitchen. There we go. All right, I'm going to get in there. You go mash. for it. This is not the time of year to start worrying about uh, calories. Calories, no, whatever. <laughs> yeah. That's why there's New Year's resolutions. That's right. That's what the New Year's <laughs> New Year's Day gym membership's all about. Working off these decadent mashed potatoes. I think these are good. And so that's a nice trick to keep the, the stove on while you're doing this. Keeps it nice and soft. Mm -hmm. Jules, this looks so good. Smells so good. We've got tasting plates already. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> mm, so savory. Those potatoes. Oh, I had the stuffing. Hold oh on. Oh my goodness. Try the potatoes. The stuffing is so good. Is it wrong to toot your own horn? <laughs> no. And it doesn't have to be Christmas. Mm. This can be enjoyed all year long, I feel. Mm. So good. And of course, top it off with a glass of wine. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you, my friend. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas.